Well, shalom everyone and welcome to our Shabbat night service. It is Shabbat, March 3rd, 2023, and we are excited about all that Jehovah is doing in the lives of his people, especially the people that are part of this lesson on tonight. We thank you for joining us and we are just excited. We have the menorah lid, symbolic of the word and the light of the word, the same as it was in the tabernacle, back in the wilderness and later in the temple. So we are going to get ready for our lesson. We're going to listen to this music. We don't own the rights to the music, but we use it as a way to get our hearts and minds ready to do and to hear all that the Ruach HaKodesh will speak to us through the word on tonight. So listen to this word, and we're going to use it to get our hearts and minds ready, give others a chance to join us as we celebrate Shabbat with each and every one of you. Yes, the Ruach HaKodesh has come to guide us through this lesson on tonight. We're going to free our minds from all the clutters of this world system that we are a part of. And we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us through this word on tonight. That's why we are excited because Messiah said wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And we know that the Ruach HaKodesh is going to stir our hearts and minds to receive the revelations of the Torah on tonight. We are in lesson 21 called Kitisa. That's Hebrew for when you take. What the Hebrew people have done is basically divide the first five books of the Bible into 52 lessons. Each one of those lessons will enable us to have a focal point. And then as we look throughout that lesson, we'll be able to see how that focal point, such as the Hebrew words, kitisa, how that works. We'll be able to see how when you take to become part of this covenant, that Jehovah is making with the children of Israel. We'll see how that thread goes all the way through these lessons on tonight. Every one of these verses are part of this lesson as we go through this study on tonight. So thank you for joining us. It is March 3rd, 2023, and actually we're the beginning of the fourth, because it was in Genesis told us that it was evening and then morning, and that comprised the day. So in actuality, we would be on the fourth day of March, beginning at sundown tonight, and that fourth would end on sundown which would be the beginning of the next night. So thank you for joining me. We are in our Sabbath lesson on tonight. We're going to participate in the, the ceremony of communion. As we are going to participate in what Yeshua, our Messiah, told us we should do. He told us to do it. 
and do it often, always in remembrance of the price that he paid for us. So I'm gonna shut this device off so we don't get any phone calls. And we are going to begin our lesson study. Let us pray. Jehovah our Elohim, we bless you and we praise you for this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you for this opportunity. You have set before us that we may study your instructions to your people called Torah. We thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, that has come to open our hearts and minds to receive all that you will speak to us on tonight through your word. So we bless you now. We thank you for not only will we hear your word, but we'll be doers of your word as well. And it's in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, Lord, Savior, and King that we pray. Amen. All right. So with that, let's get your elements together so that we can we have our Holy Eucharist or our communion service because uh, Yeshua on the night before his death, he took bread. He blessed the Father for the bread. In Hebrew, Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech Ha'alom Ha'motzi Lehem Min Ha'aretz. Blessed are you, Jehovah our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And so with that, he passed the loaf around and he told them, take, eat, take a piece, eat, eat this. But this is symbolic of my body, my body that will be broken just for you. And they ate. Then they took the cup. He passed the cup around. He said, now take and drink of this. First he blessed Jehovah, our father, for the wine. Baruch atah Yehovah Eloheinu melech ha'alom borai pari agafein. Blessed are you, Jehovah, our Elohim, king of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. And he told them then to drink of this. For this is symbolic of my blood, my blood that is shed for a renewed covenant with you. Do this often in remembrance of me. And he passed the cup and each one drank. So we drink. Doing it often, always in remembrance of the price that Yeshua prayed, paid. If you were on our lesson on uh, Wednesday night, you would have understood a little bit more the whole process of justification and how we were made righteous in the sight of Jehovah our God under <coughs> the price that Yeshua paid. So with that, now we can begin our lesson. Let us get to our shared screen on tonight because we will share these Torah words together. All right. And with that, let me get into my slideshow. 
and start. All right, so you see that, oh my goodness, I got Wednesday night on. <laughs> well, now, isn't that something? Let me get out of that. Hold on. Let me get out of that. And we're going to change that right before you. All right, now that we have it right, we will go back to our shared screen. <laughs> I had messed that up. Uh, there we are. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, so this is Shabbat. And we're gonna see tonight as we go through this lesson, how important Shabbat is for believers in Yeshua along with all Jewish people. It is important because we have, we're going to get into that a little bit this week on the whole concept of adoption. Paul said we've been grafted in to the root, the tree where its root is Torah. We've been grafted into those promises. And by being grafted in, we are fed or nourish through what? The study of the word. And that's why we're studying the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, because it was there that Moses began the instructions to the children of Israel concerning covenant life means. What was required of them? And the same thing with us as believers in Yeshua. He said, if you love me, you will commandments. You will obey what I have told you that you ought to do. And we know that Yeshua, our Messiah, is the Torah. Because uh, Johanna or John told us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And this word is the Torah of Jehovah, our Elohim. It bonded us with a covenant. And so we as children of as believers in Yeshua, let's say, we as believers in Yeshua, then we want to understand more so that we can do more. And so we get an opportunity. Remember, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, Yeshua told us. So this Shabbat, this day of rest in honor of the Creator, is essential for. What? The blessings that come with the rest in our minds and in our bodies, because we are, we'll see in, in the scriptures where it said people were, or were ill and doing things wrong, and therefore those various sicknesses came upon them. And we know that we're in a sinful world. But through what Yeshua has done for us, we have access to healing and things of that type. However, those things we have to obey in order to fully partake of what they are. And so with that, our lesson is lesson 21, it's kitisa, and it means when you take. And so it's from Exodus chapter 30, verse 11, to chapter 34, verse 35. And we're going to try to get through all of that through this lesson on tonight. So with that, we're going to get to our first page, our introduction. Moshe has received from Jehovah the instructions for the building of the tabernacle and all the furnishings and been on the mountain for 40 days. He got a whole, in the presence of Jehovah for 40 days, we're going to see some of the quotations that Moses made 
which he could only have known if Jehovah had revealed to them, revealed them to him while he was up on the mountain in the presence of Jehovah, getting the instructions and writing them down as they were given to him. Moshe has been given the outfits for the priesthood, including the high priest, which flows from the lineage of Ahuron or Aaron, high priest. Now, the people of Israel are given a tax. So we're going to begin this lesson with what? The shekel tax for the men of the mature age whereby they could go to war. And that is to provide for the expenses of the tabernacle and later the temple for all generations. So this shekel tax is part of taking a census. And one of the things they would do in taking the census if every male of that age gave the half shekel, they could count the half shekels as a check for how many people there actually were in terms of the men. And then from there, they could deal with the women and the children as well. But the main point of this was to make sure that the men that were of the age whereby, and this is the men outside of what is gonna later be developed is the tribe of Levi becoming the priestly class. Right now at this point, all of the eldest in every family, the first male would be the priest of that family. Along with that tax, we're going to get uh, complete the instructions for the incense, the actual, uh, what comprises the incense and the anointing oils. And again, the importance is continually made of keeping the Sabbath. So we'll see through this lesson that several times, Jehovah is going to mention to keep my Sabbath. That's what separates you from all other people. Now we know that there are other faiths that also would adhere to this principle of keeping the Sabbath, much more so than those who are supposed to be believers in Yeshua who have been told that they don't have to do that because what Yeshua has done is introduced us to a another day for the Sabbath. That is not what the word says. The word where you will see through it, it says throughout all your generations, forever. Yeshua did not come to destroy, but to bring it to its fullest meaning. He did not change. He changes not. He did not change the Sabbath from what we call Friday night to Saturday night. And he changed it to Sunday. That didn't happen. But as we learn more, we observe more. So we have our menorah. That's not something that has to be part of the Sabbath. But we need as much as we can because we live in a system whereby even under those who are supposed to be believers in Yeshua, we have been taught incorrectly. And in being taught incorrectly, we think that the Sabbath can be any day. But Jehovah said he set apart a specific day. And we can't change that because of ignorance. We need to adhere to because the blessings flow from obedience. Then we're going to get into the sin of the golden calf. And then the intercession of Moses on behalf of his people. And we're really going to see something very similar to what Yeshua, our Messiah. In other words, his death. And Moses was willing to risk death for the children of Israel. Yeshua did risk death for the world. But his followers received the full benefit because they acknowledge what he did. So let's get into this lesson before we don't get a chance to finish it. 
And we're starting with verse 11. Jehovah said to Moshe, when you take, uh, when you take a census of the people of Israel and register them each upon registration is to pay a ransom for his life to Jehovah to avoid any breakout or plague among them during the time of the census. Everyone subject to the census is to pay as an offering to Jehovah half a shekel, one fifth of an ounce of silver by the standard of the sanctuary shekel. A shekel each equals 20 garas, and we'll get into uh, that as we go on. Everyone over 20 years of age who is subject to the census is to give this offering to Jehovah. So whenever the census is taken, this offering will be given, and it is given and designed to support the work of the sanctuary. The rich is not to give more or the poor less than the half shekel when giving uh, Jehovah offering to atone for your lives. In other words, these were men of war and would be going out to war. So in that, there would be death. They're killing other humans and other humans are trying to kill them. So this is an atonement for their lives. You ought to take the atonement money from the people of Israel and use it for the service in the tent of meeting so that it will be a reminder of the people of Israel before Jehovah to atone for your lives. So we'll find out as they're going on their journey, how Jehovah protects them, and they're given this shekel in honor of the protection they're going to get from Jehovah. Jehovah said to Moshe, you ought to make a basin of bronze with a base of bronze for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Ahuron and his sons will wash their hands and feet there. When they enter the tent of meeting, they are to wash with water so that they won't die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by burning an offering for Jehovah, they are to wash their hands and feet so that they won't die. That means you're going to be obedient to the standards I have set for what, in fact, is required of the priests. This is to be a perpetual law for them through all their generations. And we go on. Jehovah said to Moshe, take the best spices, 500 shekels of myrrh, 12 and a half pounds, half this amount, 250 shekels of aromatic cinnamon, six and a quarter pounds, 250 shekels of aromatic cane, 50 shekels of uh, cassia, and one gallon of olive oil, and make them into a holy anointing oil, blend it and perfume it as would an expert perfume maker. It will be holy anointing oil. Use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark for the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the menorah and all its utensils, the incense altar, the altar for burnt offerings and all its utensils, and the basin with its base. You are to consecrate them. They will be especially holy and whatever touches them will be holy. Then you are to anoint Aaron and his sons. You are to consecrate them to serve me in the office of Kohen. These are the priests. Tell the people of Israel, this is to be a holy anointing oil for me through all your generations. That means forever. It is not to be used for anointing a person's body, and you are not to make any like it with the same composition of ingredients. You can use a different composition and for something, but you cannot use this specific oil because it is holy. It has been set apart by Jehovah, and you ought to treat it as set apart by Jehovah. Whatever makes Whoever makes any like it or uses it on any unauthorized person is to be cut off from his people. Jehovah said to Moshe, take aromatic plant substances, uh, balm, risin, sweet oka root, and bitter galbanum gum. These spices along with frankincense, all in equal quantities, and make incense. 
blended and perfumed as would an expert perfume maker, salted, pure, and holy, set apart once again. You ought to grind up some of it very finely and put it in front of the testimony in the tent of meeting where I will meet with you. You ought to regard it as especially holy. In other words, it's set apart specifically for this task. You are not to make for your own use any incense like it. Doesn't mean you can't have incense, but you can't have anything like that. With the same composition of ingredients, you ought to treat it as holy for Jehovah. Whoever makes up any like it to use as perfume is to be cut off from his people. So that doesn't mean you can't make any incense, but you can't make it under that composition. Otherwise, you are in violation of what Jehovah has said has been set apart for this specific task. Chapter 31. Jehovah said to Moshe, I have singled out Batsalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda or Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim, with wisdom. That's the Ruach HaKodesh, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge concerning every kind of artisanry. Now, this basically gives us the understanding. These people didn't know that this is why they were learning all those things that they had learned in Egypt. They didn't know that's what that was for. But now Jehovah is saying, I was using that to do what? Give them the skills necessary to do the work that I have for them to do. He is a master. This man is a master of design in gold, silver, bronze, cutting precious stones to be set, wood carving, and every other craft. So anything like this, this man is an expert. And he has learned these things because the Ruach HaKodesh has guided him to learn all these things for this specific task that he has. And we see here the altar and the basin with its stand. I have also pointed as his assistant, Ohaliah, of the son of <clears throat> Ahisma of the tribe of Dan. Moreover, I have endowed all the craftsmen with the wisdom to make everything I have ordered. So these skills that these people develop, even in the system of slavery, they will utilize to do this work that will be a work of pleasure for them because it is at the request of Jehovah that it is being made. The tent of meeting, the ark for the testimony, the ark cover above it, all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils, the table that holds the showbread, and the pure menorah and all its utensils, the incense altar, the altar for burnt offerings and all its utensils, the basin and its base. You see the basin and its base, the altar and its base. The garments for officiating the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons so that they can serve in the office of priest. The anointing oil and the incense of aromatic spices for the holy place. They are to make everything just as I have ordered you. So now we have the full composition of everything that's going to be involved in not only the tabernacle, but the actual services that will begin to take place. We go on, verse 12. Jehovah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, you ought to observe my Shabbats, my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you through all your generations, so that you will know that I am Jehovah who sets you apart for me. So we have been set apart through what Yeshua has done. So we want to participate in this celebration of Shabbat. We want to do that because why? Because it is something that is required as part of the covenant that we have became partakers of. Therefore, you are to keep my Shabbat because it is set apart for you. Everyone who treats it as ordinary must be put to death. For whoever does any work on it is to be cut off from his people. We'll get to explaining even more about Shabbat as we go through 
uh, Leviticus. The people of Israel are to keep the Shabbat, to observe Shabbat through all their generations as a perpetual covenant. This is why the children of Israel continue to keep Shabbat. They're not messing with that. They will do things, as they say, to try to build a fence around it, something that they were not required to do, but they say you're required. Those are things that they're doing because they want to make sure that people get the blessings from observing Shabbat or the Sabbath. When he had finished speaking with Moses on my Sinai, Sinai, Jehovah gave him the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of, tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of your Elohim. So not only did Jehovah carve out these stones, but he wrote on them. He did that and then gave them as part of what we call the testimony or the covenant that is being made with the children of Israel. Then all of a sudden, when the people saw chapter 32 that Moshe was taking a long time to come down from the mountain, they gathered around Ahuron and said to him, get busy and make us gods to go ahead of us. Because this Moshe, the man that brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. Ahuron said to them, have your wives, sons, and daughters strip off their gold earrings and bring them to me. Remember, Aaron and Ur were left in charge of the people. And if the people needed anything, they would go to Ahuron. Well, they did. Problem is, he didn't seek out Jehovah to figure out what he should do. He was trying to please the people. Or some scholars said he was trying to stall for time until Moshe returned. In any case, we can see that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So with all this going on, with the covenant being ratified by the tablets, here comes Satan and the, getting in the hearts of these people, and they come and say, we don't know what happened to Moses. They're going to violate the commandment right away and make a Statue, uh, statue of a calf. We go on. The people stripped off their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. He received what they gave him, melted it down, and made it into the shape of a calf. They said, they said, Israel, here is your God. So now these are the leaders of these people that came and had Ahuron do that. They said, Israel, here is your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. On seeing this, Ahuron built an altar in front of it and proclaimed, tomorrow is to be a feast for Jehovah. So now this man, Moses, has not come down, so the people demanded from Aaron that he take that goal and make them a statue that they understood because they don't know what happened with Moses up on the mount. Ahuron does it, molds it into this calf, and then tells them tomorrow will be a feat, not today. So he really want Moses to show up. Early the next morning, they got up and offered burnt offerings and presented peace offerings. That same day, they, that same day. Afterwards, the people sat down to eat and drink. Then they got up to indulge in revelry. When you begin to create your own system, you will endure. Now you become your own God. So you can do whatever you want to do, which is what this world system tries to get the believers to do, even as much as. Shabbat. Jehovah said to Moshe, go down, hurry. Your people whom you brought up, whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have become corrupt. So quickly have they turned aside from the way I ordered them to follow. They have cast a metal statue of a calf, worshiped it, sacrificed to it and said, Israel, here is your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. 
Jehovah continues speaking to Moses. Moshe, I have been watching these people and you can see how stiff necked they are. Now, leave me alone so that my anger can blaze against them and I can put an end to them. I will make a great nation out of you instead. Moshe pleaded with Jehovah his Elohim. He said, Jehovah, why must your anger blaze against your own people? <laughs> Let's get that off me. Your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, not me, and with great power and a strong hand. This is what you have said. Mo Moshe is repeating the words of Jehovah back to him. That's what we do when we're in prayer. We pray the word. Because in praying the word, you are authenticating what it is that you're saying. And in the more you pray the word, the stronger you will become to hear the voice of Jehovah through the Holy Spirit and to withstand all of the pressure that the enemy will put to bear on you. So why let the Egyptians say it was with evil intentions that he led them out? to slaughter them in the hills and wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger. Relent. Don't bring such a disaster on your people. Remember, Abram, Yisak, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your very self. How does he know all this? There was no Genesis. Things had been done through word of mouth. How does he know all this? He was up there 40 days and he was getting all of this information. You promised them, I will make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky and I will give all this land I have spoken about to your descendants and they will possess it forever. Jehovah then changed his mind about the disaster he had planned for his people. He accepted his prayer. Moshe turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets inscribed on both sides, on the front and on the back. So now Moshe goes down, but Jehovah has already said, I won't do it. The tablets were the work of Elohim and the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. When Yahashua or Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moshe, it sounds like war in the camp. Moshe answered, that is neither the clamor of victory nor the wailings of defeat. What I hear is the sound of people singing. But the moment Moshe got near the camp, when he saw the calf and the dancing, his own anger blazed up. Remember that, his own anger blazed up. Jehovah didn't tell him to break the tablets. He'd already said, I will not kill the people. They have been forgiven. Moshe is angry. He threw down the tablets he had been holding and shattered them at the base of the mountain. Seizing the calf they had made, he melted it in fire and grounded it to powder, which he scattered on the water. Then he made the people of Israel drink it. Moshe said to Aharon, what did these people do to you to make you lead them into such a terrible sin? Aharon replied, my Lord shouldn't be so angry. You know what these people are like, that they are determined to do evil. So they said to me, make us gods to go ahead of us. Because this Moshe, the man that brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. I answered them, anyone with gold, strip it off. So they gave it to me. I threw it in the fire and out came this calf. Huh. When Moshe, that is an amazing, he said he threw it in the fire and out came the calf. We'll see about that. When Moshe saw that the people had done this as Aaron had allowed them to get out of control to the derision of their enemies, Moshe stood at the entrance of, to the camp and shouted, whoever is for Jehovah, come to me. 
all of the descendants of Levi. Now remember, that's the tribe here in that Horona part of the descendants of Levi rallied around him. He told them, here is what Jehovah, the Elohim of Israel says. Each of you put his sword on his side and go up and down the camp from gate to gate. And every man is to kill his own kinsman, his own friend and his own neighbor. Anybody that was a leader in this rebellion must die. The sons of Levi did what Moshe said. And that day, 3,000 of the people died. Now, there were over 600,000 men. They killed 3,000 people. So that's a small part of it, but these were what the leaders do. So we learn that you can't just follow people blindly. We've been given the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of truth, so let's hear him and do what he tells us to do. Moshe said, you have consecrated yourself today to Jehovah because every one of you has been against his own son and against his own kinsman in order to bring a blessing on yourself today. So by being obedient, then blessings will follow. And these are for the Levites. So now they're gonna become the priestly class and the elders of each family will no longer be a priest. The next day, Moshe said to the people, you have committed a terrible sin. Now I will go up to Jehovah. Maybe I will be able to atone for your sin. Moshe went back to Jehovah and said, please, these people have committed a terrible sin. They have made themselves a God out of gold. Now, if you will, just forgive their sin. So Jehovah had already said they were forgiven, but Moses is now pleading even more after the 3,000 people had been killed. He knows that this is not enough for what they have done. They broke the covenant. He broke the tablets. He broke them. Jehovah didn't tell him to break them, but he broke them out of his anger. His anger later is going to get him in trouble with the what? With the rock, because rather than speak to it, he's going to hit it. So this was the opportunity for Moses to understand a little bit more about Jehovah, and that's going to be brought about. Moses then said, but if you want, then I beg you, blot me out of your book, which you have written. So in other words, Jehovah knows all and has this, has this uh, list of those who are going to be redeemed. And so Moses knows that. And so he says, I will die in their stead. So blot me out of the book. If Moses is not in the book, how the children going to get to Israel? He's already seen that in the scrolls in the book. So those who have sinned against me, says Jehovah, are the ones I will blot out of my book. Get in the revelations and you'll see about the book of life. Now, go and lead the people to the place I told you about. My angel will go ahead of you. Nevertheless, the time for punishment will come, and then I will punish them for their sin. Jehovah struck the people with a plague because they had made the calf the one Ahuron made. So there were others. He told them, no, those who have done what? Have sinned against me. Everybody wasn't destroyed by the Levites. There were others that thought they had got away. Well, you don't get away. Because Jehovah sees all and knows all. And so you don't get away. So a plague comes and then kills a lot more of the people. Jehovah said to Moshe, leave you and the people you brought up from the land of Egypt. Move on from here toward the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel ahead of you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, or Yabusi. You will go to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I myself will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people that I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard this, so Moses is going to go back down and tell them this bad news. They went into mourning and no one wore his ornaments or anything other than basic dress. 
Jehovah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go up with you for even one moment, I would exterminate you. Now keep your ornaments off. Then I will decide what to do to you. So from Mount Oreb onward, the people of Israel stripped themselves of any ornaments, any kind of jewelry. Moshe, Moshe would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far away from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting. Everyone who wanted to consult Jehovah would go out to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Whenever Moshe went out to the tent, all the people would get up and stand, each man at his tent door, and look at Moshe until he had gone into the tent. Whenever Moshe entered the tent, the column of cloud would descend and station itself at the entrance to the tent, and Jehovah would speak with Moshe. When all the people saw the column of cloud stationed at the entrance to the tent, they would get up and prostrate themselves, each man at his tent door. Jehovah would speak to Moshe face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Then he would return to the camp. But the young man who was his assistant, Yahashua, the son of Nun, never left the tent. And so we see that during this period, Moshe would not leave his tent among all the people, he would move it away. Now the tabernacle is gonna get built. Once it's built, then the people can, will then worship looking at the tabernacle. Moshe said to Jehovah, look, you say to me, make these people move on, but you haven't let me know whom you will be sending with me. Nevertheless, you have said, I know you by name, and also you have found favor in my sight. These are the things that Jehovah has said to Moshe, once again, Moshe is praying to him and repeating those words to Jehovah. Now, please, if it is really the case that I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I will understand. Proverbs tells us in all of our getting, get understanding. You, I will understand you and continue finding favor in your sight. So we study the word so we get more understanding of who Jehovah is and who we are to him. Moreover, keep on seeing this nation as your people. Jehovah answered, set your mind at rest. My presence will go with you. After all, Moshe replied, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't make us go on from here. For how else is it to be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people other than by your going with us. That is what distinguishes us, me and your people from all the other peoples on the earth. And that is our obedience to the Ruach HaKodesh is what separates us from all other peoples. Jehovah said to Moshe, I will also do what you have asked me to do because you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. But Moshe said, I beg you to show me your glory. What is this? Moshe wants to know. How could you be so gracious to these people after we have committed such a grave sin before you? And that's why John tells us in, in, in 1 John that when you make a mistake, when you miss the mark, you didn't set out to sin. When you miss the mark, quickly repent. And he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Moshe can't understand this. So he says, Jehovah replies, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. And in your presence, I will pronounce the name of Jehovah. Moreover, I show favor to whomever I will, and I display mercy to whomever I will. Once again, this is the second time we know for sure that Jehovah has said this to Moshe. But my face, he continued, you cannot see because a human being cannot look at me and remain alive. Here, he said, is a place near me. Stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you inside a crevice in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. 
So Moses is going to be covered to protect him from the glory of Jehovah. By saying with hand, that's something that Moses understands. He says, then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face is not to be seen. We go on. Jehovah said to Moshe, cut yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will inscribe. I will inscribe on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke, pointing out once again, your anger got the best of you. Be ready by morning. In the morning, you ought to ascend Mount Sinai and present yourself to me on the top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you, and no one is to be seen anywhere on the mountain. Don't even let the flocks or herds feed in front of this mountain. Moshe cut two stone tablets like the first. Then he got up early in the morning and with the two stone tablets in his hand, ascended Mount Sinai as Jehovah had ordered him to do. See that getting up in the morning, getting that, get this thing done. Jehovah descended in the cloud, stood with him there and pronounced the name of Jehovah. Jehovah passed before him and proclaimed, not you, David, he, he proclaimed the name. Yehovah, Yehovah is Elohim, merciful and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in grace and truth, showing mercy, I mean, showing grace to the thousandth generation, forgiving offenses, crimes, and sins, yet not exonerating the guilty but causing the negative effects of the parents' offenses to be experienced by their children and grandchildren, and even by the third and fourth generation. So Jehovah is saying that even he's gracious and merciful, and he's forgiven them, but you have brought into existence forces that you need to be aware of because your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren can get the effects of this negative behavior that you have exemplified. At once, Moshe bowed his head to the ground, prostrated himself, and said, if I have now found favor in your view, Jehovah, then please let Jehovah go with us, even though they are a stick neck stick they are a stiff-necked people and pardon our offenses and our sin and take us as your possession. So he has interceded the very same thing Yeshua is going to do on Calvary. Moshe has done here for the children of Israel. Forgive us for our offenses and take us as your possession. It's the same thing Yeshua does for the believers in Yeshua as the propitiation for our sins. So he does the very same thing. Jehovah says here, I am making a covenant in front of all your people. I will do wonders such as have not been created anywhere on earth or in any nation. All the people around you will see the work of Jehovah. What I am going to do through you will be awesome. Observe what I am ordering you to do today. Here, I am driving out ahead of you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites or Yavusi. Then he goes on and tells them, you are, be careful not to make a covenant with the people living in the land where you are going so that they won't become a snare within your own border. So Moses is given a vision even of the land. Whether you are to demolish their altars, smash their standing stones, and cut down their sacred poles, because you are not to bow down to any other God. Since Jehovah, whose very name is Jealous, is a jealous Elohim, do not make a covenant with the people living in the land. 
it will cause you to go astray after their gods and sacrifice to their God. Then they will invite you to join them in eating their sacrifices. And you will take their daughters as wives for your sons. Their daughters will prostitute themselves to their own gods and make your sons do the same. So all of this evil behavior, the prostitution and all of the sex and all of those things that are going to come about will come about because of your desire to serve someone other than me. Do not cast metal gods for yourself, metal gods for yourself. Keep the festival of not. Now he's going into these special times of the year that he has set aside when we are to present ourselves before him. With no temple, we present ourselves in the form of what? The fest acknowledging the festival and what Jehovah has done for us, even through the sacrifice that Yeshua has done to what? Graft us in and join Jew and Gentile together. Keep the festival of matzah by eating matzah, the seven day feast as I ordered you. For seven days during the month of Aviv, for it was in the month of Aviv that you came out from Egypt. Everything that is first from the womb is mine. Of all your livestock, you are to set aside for me the males the firstborn of cattle and flock. The firstborn of a donkey you must redeem with a lamb. If you won't redeem it, break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you are to redeem. And no one is to appear before me empty-handed. Hmm. At the festivals, you're going to bring what you're supposed to bring. Six days you will work, but on the seventh day you are to rest. Even in plowing time and harvest season, you are to rest. Right there, once again, he introduces what? Shabbat or the Sabbath. Observe the festival of Shavuot. Now we've done unleavened bread. Now we're at Shavuot with the first gathered produce of the wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. The festival of ingathering is Sukkot. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the Lord, Jehovah, the Elohim of Israel. He says you are to present yourself before me. And he says his presence will be in this temple. For I am going to expel nations ahead of you and expand your territory. And no one will even cover your land when you go up and appear before Jehovah, your Elohim, three times a year. So obedience brings blessings. So we want to be blessed and we need to be obedient. He goes on. You are not to offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. And the sacrifice of the Feast of Pesach is not to be left until morning. So he's gone through the other three festivals. He said, but don't forget Pesach or Passover. You ought to bring the best first fruits of your land into the house of Jehovah Elohim. Those first fruits will come forth at the harvest of Shavuot. You are not to boil a young goat in his mother's milk. Basically, this is a uh, idiom for saying that you're going to be careful how you deal with animals. And you're not going to boil an animal in milk you've gathered from its mother. That's an inhumane treatment. So you are not to treat animals in that way. Verse 27, Jehovah said to Moshe, write these words down because they are the terms of the covenant I have made with you and with Israel. Moshe was there with Jehovah 40 days and 40 nights, during which time he neither ate nor drank and wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the 10 words. Jehovah wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the 10 words. And Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testament's hand. He didn't realize that the skin on his face was sending out rays of light as a result of his talking with Jehovah. When Aharon and the people of Israel saw Moshe, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to approach him. But Moshe called to them. Then Aharon and all the community leaders came back to him, and Moshe spoke to them. Afterwards, all the people of Israel came near, and he passed on to them all the orders that Jehovah had told him on Mount Sinai. 
Once Moshe had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when he went in before Jehovah for him to speak, he would take the veil off until he came out. Then when he came out, he would tell the people of Israel what he had been ordered. But when the people of Israel saw Moshe's face and the skin of Moshe's face shone, he would put the veil back over his face until he went in again to speak with Jehovah. So we can see then the importance of studying the Torah so we understand even more what Yeshua, our Messiah, has done for us. But he's done it, he said, so we are to be what? Obedient. So he's given us the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. He said, you love me, keep my commandment. Do what I've told you to do. Now I'm going to give you a comforter, the very spirit of truth to guide you. And behold, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. So we don't have to. We do, but we don't set out to do wrong. So as we study the Torah and we learn what it is we're supposed to do, then we have to act on it. We know in order for truth to be retained, you have to follow it up with action. That is what immuna is. That is the action based on the words you say you're going to do. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure our time, yes, our time is up. So with that, we're going to pray and then we're going to dismiss our service on today. I, I really feel uh, that we're, by next Shabbat, we'll be meeting, for those of you who are close, you'll be meeting in our home and I'm going to try to work that out this week. I'm going to try to work out this week how we can meet in our home on Shabbat for the service and began to receive the blessings even the more by gathering together on what is actually Shabbat and being obedient to what the Torah has instructed us to do. Let us pray. You're over our Elohim, I bless you for this day. I thank you and praise you for all that you do. Thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh who has come to guide us into all truth. Thank you for opening our hearts and minds to receive and empowering us to be obedient to your instructions. And it's in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen. With that, I want to say shalom. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Shalom. And I will see you on Wednesday night for Wednesday night Bible study. And I hope we're ready. We're going to push forward to be ready next Shabbat to meet here in our home. Thank you so much for joining me. Shalom. Shalom.